Hello everybody and welcome to my first trimester recap video. As I am filming this video, I am currently 14 weeks and four days pregnant. So I have officially entered my second trimester, which is very exciting. I'm very thankful and grateful. And you might see my husband, by the way, walking back and forth in the background here. I've decided to film outside today because it's a beautiful day. There's birds chirping and I just wanted to be outside. So I am gonna go over my first trimester recap with you guys. And I will say that I really did have a very lovely first trimester. I know a lot of women really struggle and I have to admit I had it very easy, I would say, in comparison. So sending hugs to everyone who has struggled through their first trimester, also sending a virtual hug to anyone trying to conceive. I know that not everyone is in a place where they want to hear about somebody else's pregnancy, and I totally understand that. So if this video is hard for you to watch at the moment, please do not watch and I will leave this video here in the future for when you are ready to come back and you're in a good place to watch it but do know that I do understand the struggle and I'm sending everybody hugs at home who are trying to conceive. So with that being said I've made a very long list on my phone. It doesn't look that long with small writing um, and I'm gonna go through the first trimester and hopefully I don't miss anything. I tried to film this video a couple weeks ago and it's a good thing I didn't because I made the mistake of thinking the first trimester ended at 12 weeks. No, it ends at 14. So, and it's a good thing because there were some new symptoms that have popped up recently, uh, just before my first trimester officially ended. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about the background, how we've got here, just in case you are just now stumbling across this video. So my husband and I, Larry, we decided to do IVF after three IUI failed attempts and we had our embryo transfer. That might be a loud truck, hold on. We had our embryo transfer on December first, which was really, really exciting. And then I believe it was December 10th, we had our blood pregnancy test with our fertility clinic to confirm our pregnancy. I might be off on that date, but we did take an at-home stick um, pregnancy test. It was positive. It was so exciting. I was so shocked. And it's just, it's just such an amazing feeling to see that positive. And then we did share quite early on, just because a lot of you guys knew that we were going through IVF, you had known that we had the transfer, and we did share quite early on, which was very exciting. Can also be a scary thing, but um, if we did happen to miscarry, I would want to talk about that and share that with you guys. And because I think it's important to talk about those things, and it's a very hard thing to deal with. I don't know personally, but. I know that women go through that alone and it's very, very devastating and very heartbreaking. I was prepared to share that struggle if that struggle did come. Cause I know a lot of you guys were asking me why did I share so early just in case. Um, so I did want to touch base on that. So let's start about first symptoms that I had in the very, very beginning. So I remember having period like cramps, which was quite concerning, scary. I mean, everybody says it's really exciting, but the problem with those period like cramps is sometimes Luna, Lexi, I've got my two cats over here too. That Luna has got Lexi backed in a corner. Um, what's concerning about those cramps is yes, it can be those implant implantation cramps from the embryo, but it can also be like that very beginning stage of period like cramps. But I did have one random cramp that I was like, Ooh, I don't usually get that. And it was like a lightning bolt had struck my left ovary. It was like the weirdest feeling or the left like side. And it was like a very sudden, very strange. And I was like, is that implantation? But of course things happen with the female body that you just, you never, you never know what's really going on. And it's just the two week wait. I totally understand that struggle. Oh my gosh. Um, but that was one of my very first symptoms was the cramps and oh man, the boobs, the boobs were so sore. They were getting really, really sore. Um, but then we did get our positive test and those two symptoms were my first symptoms and my longest symptoms were the really extremely sore boobs and also the period like or pre, um, implantation cramping. It was also very, very thirsty. Because we did get pregnant through IVF, we were able to find out when we were pregnant at four weeks pregnant. So baby at the time was the size of a poppy seed. Oh my goodness, so cute. And today, as I'm filming this video at 14 weeks, baby is the size of an orange, or they say uh, the size of a closed fist, which is really, really fun. So I do wanna say when it comes to nausea and vomiting, I was very, very fortunate not to have any vomiting through my first trimester. I know that is 
such an extreme struggle i really did think that i was going to have that and the reason i did is because i'm very prone to nausea and car sickness and all the things when it comes to nausea in general i'm very prone to it so i was absolutely shocked to find out that i did not have it but i do have something that i want to share with you guys because this is what i do use when i do get nauseous not pregnancy related though it's called a sniff stick i'm going to link it in the description box below it's essentially a combination of essential oils it was given to my mom after one of her surgeries and it was supposed to help her with that nauseous feeling and it really did i watched my mom almost throw up and she sniff that stick and she didn't and i'm like oh my gosh i need that and she <laughs> ended up giving it to me well after she was recovered of course and it is very helpful i also purchased these lemon ice frozen um little treats that are really helpful with that too but again i did not ever vomit i was very lucky but i did have on and off nausea and i could not stand the smell of cooked food and i couldn't eat cooked food i think that started around seven weeks pregnant up until about 10 like i would say six to ten ish weeks pregnant where i would make spaghetti and you guys know i make a lot of spaghetti a lot of tacos i could not eat it i was trying to eat it and i was like nearly gagging and i'm like oh, okay so i went on a very smoothie fruit smoothie heavy with spinach um and protein powder and also um just fruit in general that was pretty much what i was living off of for quite a bit and meat i also really didn't want meat for a while everything was being substituted with beans so if i made tacos i was making like a bean uh, taco instead of just the ground beef i just could not do the whole meat thing however i am much better now with food i can eat anything and whatever i want at this point uh, as i'm 14 weeks i don't have any any food issues now when it comes to food aversions like weird things uh, i don't know actually there is a couple of things because you guys were like oh my gosh that's so funny cheeseburgers from wendy's now it was very short-lived it was only two times where i was like i need a cheeseburger like right now and I don't ever eat cheeseburgers if I go to a fast food restaurant I'll order a fried chicken sandwich and I was like no absolutely I want a cheeseburger with extra pickles and then I dipped it in a lot of mustard so it was like a lot of soury foods which I like anyways but the cheeseburgers I knew was a difference for me also chef boyardee ravioli in the can that is something that I used to eat as a kid and something that I just haven't had in a very very long time I walked past it at the pub Publix grocery store and I swiped them off the, the the shelf and shoved them in my cart I was like you are coming home with me uh, so that was another really strange one but super yummy and then bagels with strawberry cream cheese. That's another thing that I don't eat often, but I just wanted fruity cream cheese and bagels. When you're having issues eating food, so you're eating a lot of fruit smoothies and just fruit, it was nice to have that bagel as a, as a nice carb to kind of like hold things over. Another thing that I thought was a strange early on symptom was I would eat dinner, I would go and lay down in bed, and just actually in general, like. I would eat food in general in the morning, have breakfast, and I would be starving an hour after I ate. And I'm like, I usually don't have to eat every hour. I just felt ravenous hungry. There was no stopping it. It wasn't just, ooh, I feel like I can have a nibble. No, it was like I hadn't eaten in days. And I was like, this is so bizarre. But again, a lot of you guys reassured me over on Instagram. You were like, you're growing a human. That's normal. It happens. And I'm like, okay. Cause I'm like, why am I so hungry? I just ate. And then with the fertility clinic, by the way, cause a lot of you guys might not know, but we did graduate from our fertility clinic December 27th. Once you reach a certain point in the pregnancy, you have graduated from there and they have you move on to a normal regular OB. So I did transfer uh, to a new OB on January 24th. So that was also a very exciting milestone that happened during our first trimester. There is one food, going back to food, there is one item that I still cannot stand the smell of and Larry has it almost every day and he apologizes. I'm like, please don't apologize. I want you to be able to eat what you like to eat. And that's bacon. And I love bacon. I eat a lot of bacon anytime. And what's funny is in the very beginning of the pregnancy, when I just found out I was probably five weeks pregnant, six weeks pregnant, I would have a piece of bacon with my breakfast. Larry would make me one. And then it got to a point where I was like, mm, no. And now still, every time he cooks that bacon, I'm like, there's just something about it and I cannot take it. So that's another strange thing. I have had some weird sleeping habits and lack of motivation in the beginning. I'm getting much better now. 
Um, I did end up getting quite sick in my first trimester of pregnancy. It didn't have to do with pregnancy, uh, but I was very sick from, I think it was nine weeks pregnant up until about my 11 week pregnant mark. Um, and I just lacked all sorts of motivation. It could have been a combination of that. Um, and then not having to do with anything with being sick, I am going through these weird phases, which it just started happening happening again for the last two nights in a row where I am waking up at 3 a.m. sharp and I am up until five. And it's not just in and out of sleep. I am wide awake up and I don't understand if that has anything to do with pregnancy or if it's just a weird coincidence. Um, I was very tired in the beginning of pregnancy, but I wouldn't say that it was like out of the normal. It was just kind of like a eh, mild fatigue. And then my migraines, a lot of you have been asking if they're worse during pregnancy. I would not say they are worse, but what is making them worse is the fact that I can't take my migraine preventative or my migraine medication. Um, I'm only allowed to take Tylenol, so I kind of, and Tylenol does not touch a migraine. And then of course I do things at home to kind of help that, like peppermint oil, ice, I lay in a dark room, there's just not much I can do and I just have to go through it for the three days that I have it and then I am fine. So I'm not getting them more frequently, but they're just more intense because I can't take anything that helps them. So I usually get one about once a month, which is really not that bad considering when I lived in Ohio I was getting them several times a month and it was being hospitalized for them so they're much better here in Florida I'm very thankful and uh, they're not so bad during the pregnancy I'm very very fortunate about that now when it comes to the baby bump when did I start showing I would say I started to notice I have it written down here around 10 weeks I started to know or notice my lower abdomen was starting to get a round form and by 12 weeks I was definitely like okay baby is starting to make an appearance which was really really exciting and it's just that really cute pregnancy bump where nobody can tell that I'm pregnant unless they know me and know that I am so I'm excited to hit that point in the pregnancy where I can actually wear a pregnancy outfit and it's like the baby bump and I don't know I'm very excited I'm, I'm looking forward to it I don't have any stretch marks yet a lot of you guys have asked me what I am using over on Instagram I'm using an oil called bio oil I bought it uh, from Target and it helps with stretch marks and dark spots and this and that and a lot of you have asked if I'm like concerned about gaining weight during this pregnancy and the answer to that question is absolutely not I know that I'm gonna gain weight I know that my body is gonna change and that's okay we're growing a human here so we are definitely gonna go through some changes and you've earned those stretch marks if I get them I get them I think that it I think there's products that can help but at the end of the day, I also think it comes down to like your body, your genetics, and sometimes sometimes people are just more prone to stretch marks. I have stretch marks on my upper thighs and on my inner thighs. I have ever since I went through puberty. They're there and they're nothing to be ashamed about. If that's you growing into your body. Again, ask me when I'm, <laughs> you know, after I've given birth and how I feel about my changing body, but right now I'm embracing it and I'm just looking forward to holding that little baby one day. Something that absolutely terrified me and that was spotting. I started spotting one morning I woke up, I went to go do my morning pee, I wiped and I had dark brown spotting, which brown is old blood so that's kind of a plus side. But it was really, really shocking because up until I conceived and up until that point at rate at 11 weeks, there I had no spotting, no bleeding at all. So that was absolutely terrifying. I called my doctor. My doctor didn't seem too concerned. He brought me in. Of course, it happened on a weekend. It happened on a Sunday morning. And then he brought me in to the doctor on Monday. He said if I wanted to go to the ER, I could, but he didn't think that it was necessary. So I did take that advice and I waited until Monday. But do know that if you feel like you need to go, like if I would have had intense period cramping or cramps or sharp abdominal pain and heavier bleeding absolutely would have gone to the ER but I didn't have any of those pains really that were extreme sharp I had dull period like cramps but I've had those on and off through this pregnancy so it wasn't anything out of the ordinary other than the spotting and I am still spotting I just had my 14 week appointment uh, yesterday and I told them I was still spotting and I am on what is it called? Oh, not uterus rest. What is it called? Cervical rest? Oh, what's it called? I forget. I knew I knew the name of it and now I'm like forgetting. I'm not allowed to have an orgasm or sex at this 
time and it has been that way since I started spotting at 11 weeks here we are with that that was something that happened that I was like oh um, and then they are gonna because I am still on and off spotting they're gonna take a look at my placenta just to make sure the placenta looks okay and everything else but sometimes women just spot their pregnancy and I just might be one of those women that have the on and off spotting okay so strange things that happen towards the end of the first trimester for me and that is hair growth whoa and it's not just on my head i don't know if my hair on my head is growing really fast but i'm noticing in other areas where i shave and the next day it's already like growing in and i'm like i have to shave again are you kidding so it's like growing really 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 fast and then freckle a freckle appeared about right here out of nowhere i was doing my makeup one day and i was like oh you're a new freckle okay <laughs> it's kind of a cute freckle i'm excited about it but i don't know if it has to be a pregnancy freckle so i don't know guys i think that might be it so now i'm going to run through i asked you guys over on instagram if you had any specific questions regarding the first trimester so i'm going to run through those and answer the most popular most asked questions about the first trimester for you guys and tack that on to the end of this video. I really hope I didn't forget anything about my first trimester. I was really nervous to film this video because I didn't want to forget anything. Uh, so hopefully I have not forgot anything and let me know if you guys enjoyed the first trimester recap and I'll film a second trimester recap in the future and please feel free to share any tips or advice or things that you went through in your pregnancy and your far first trimester down in the comments below. I find it really helpful to read it and I'm sure a lot of other people that are in the comment section will help find it helpful as well. The first question is any must read pregnancy books. So the first book and the only book really that I picked up is what to expect when you're expecting. And then the app that I downloaded to track baby's progress is what to expect. So those are the two things that I have used the most, but please leave me book recommendations down below because I know there are so many books that I could be reading and I would love to read. So leave me your favorite book recommendations below and I will check them out. The next question is, are you excited to shop for maternity clothes so yes and no it just it just kind of so far I haven't shopped for any maternity clothes I'm still in my regular clothes but I can tell some of my I do have room in my leggings so that is good because I buy the really stretchy kind some of my leggings like the compression ones that are really tight oh no we're not wearing those <laughs> anymore they they are like no it's not good I don't think I'm gonna dabble into the maternity jeans and maybe there is cute ones out there maybe I will try who knows maybe we'll do a try on in the future with maternity clothes um, but so far I haven't really purchased anything but yeah I would say I'm excited I think there's gonna be a point where I'm I'm obviously definitely gonna need them I haven't got there yet but this weekend I am gonna I am gonna do some shopping with my friend and I do plan to look at some maternity clothes while we're out so we shall see what's been one of the hardest things in your first trimester by the way love you love you too I would say the hardest thing for me in the first trimester was the worry, like the constant worry about the baby and the pregnancy and if everything was okay. Um, that was the hardest thing for me. I am, I'm sure a lot of you can relate to that. And it's so hard to say try not to worry and just take it day by day. And you know, that's that's it's so hard to say that and it's so hard to take that advice. But that is what I tried to do is like when I was feeling like that, I'm like, it's gonna be okay, breathe. I kept myself quite occupied and I just focused on drinking lots of water, eating healthy, not always eating healthy, I'll tell you that. Spicy Cheetos, oh my gosh, the spicy Cheetos was a thing. Guys, I was on a hot fry spicy Cheeto kick like you would not believe. And a lot of you guys were like, you're not gonna be able to eat that soon. So far, I've had no issues with hot or spicy foods. I know it's very early on and I know that can be a problem later on with heartburn. So far, I haven't had that. Um, but yeah, I would say that was the one main hardest thing to deal with in early pregnancy. Did you adopt any exercise routine? If not, will you during the second trimester? So I had this whole thought that I was going to walk every day and do some exercise every day and do some stretching every day. And that has not happened at all. I've maybe walked like gone on a walk like once or twice where I thought, okay, exercise. But then the spotting and the bleeding happened. But again, that was around 11 weeks that that started and I was put on pelvic rest from there um, and told to like try to put my feet up more, but that doesn't mean that I'm not allowed to do a walk, brisk walk exercise. I just will have to say that the motivation has not been there and it's in the back of my head and I have screenshot so many or downloaded so many videos of 
you know, prenatal stretches and pregnancy workouts, and I haven't done one of them. So one of my goals for the second trimester is to start kind of doing some kind of light stretching and some light, very light exercises. I do have to be careful right now because of the cervical rest or the whatever it's called, but I do want to start getting at least into stretching and strengthening. How are you handling going pee all night? LOL, you look great. Thank you so much. That's another symptom that I forgot to mention. And the peeing is not all night. It is all the time. I'm getting ready to go on a road trip and I don't know how I am going to get through that road trip without stopping and peeing every half hour. It has been insane. And I do wake up at least four to five times a night to go pee now, which it's part of the course, it happens. They say it's supposed to get better in the second trimester, but then as baby gets bigger, then it starts all over again where you're going frequent urinating a lot. It just is what it is. It's kind of funny though. Like I'll have a, if I drink like five or six of these humongous things of water a day and I'm just constantly, constantly going, which is a good thing. Baby needs a lot of water. I need a lot of water to stay hydrated, um, but it's just par for the course. And here we are. <laughs> Lots of peeing. Have you felt any movement? Actually, for the first time, my doctor did ask me that yesterday at my 14 week appointment. And thus far I have felt no movement. They say the first movements that you feel will be like little flutters or little butterflies, but thus far I have not. So hopefully I will start feeling that in the second trimester. I know 14 weeks is still quite early to feel that first movement. So let me know in the comments below, when did you feel the first movement, movement during your pregnancy? So that'll be exciting. I can't wait to see your guys' answers. Do you sleep on your stomach? No, I am a side sleeper, which I did find out is the best position to sleep in during pregnancy anyways, but I'm, I am always a side sleeper. It hurts my back. I don't know if it's because I have like back issues in my lower back, but sleeping on my stomach and I have neck issues is never a good thing for me. And I cannot sleep on my back, which I don't know. I'm, I'm a side sleeper, luckily. Are you anxious about how pregnancy changes the body? So I did briefly talk about this um, in earlier in this video, but I did kind of want to say too, because I don't want to say I, I, I embrace it and this and that, because I know that there's a lot of women that struggle with the changing body. And I'm sure I might get to a point where I might have a struggle with a certain way that I look. And we'll, we'll cross that road when we get there. And I will be open and honest with you guys if that does happen to me, because I know that does, that does happen. So I do know that some women do struggle with the change and that's okay. And I think that we all need to go at our own pace and not be so hard on ourselves and just take it day by day. I think that that would be quite helpful through the journey because we are going through a lot mentally physically it's it is really a lot hang in there you got this and we'll talk more about the changing bodies and all of that if i start to have a struggle with that fortunately i am in a positive mindset with my changing body but i haven't had big changes yet and when i see a little bump i get excited um so i will say though i have noticed my arms are Okay, there's one change I guess that I am not so happy with. And that I think my arms are holding on to fat more than they ever used to. <clears throat> so that is an interesting change and that's making me kind of want to do like arm circles and things like that. But I wouldn't say I'm beating myself up about it. It's just making me more aware of that I need to do some like strengthening and at my own pace and when I'm in a positive mindset to do so. So weird question, but do you feel pregnant? Like, does your body feel different? Totally not a weird question because sometimes I, I really don't feel pregnant. Like if I didn't know I was pregnant, part of me would not know I'm pregnant. Does that sound weird? Is that weird at this point? I don't know, but that's sometimes how I feel. I don't know, there was things in the beginning where I was like, oh yeah, I'm definitely pregnant. <laughs> like when I didn't want to eat spaghetti or any meat or any like food in general besides fruit and fruit smoothies. So there was definitely signs. I don't know, part of me really doesn't. I think too, like once you start feeling those kicks and then you're like, oh yeah. And like when you're really showing, but to be honest, I don't really feel like I am. I hope that's not bizarre. I hope I'm not alone in feeling that way either. Uh, so let me know, <laughs> let me know guys. That does end the questions. So thank you so much for watching this first trimester recap. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you found it insightful and helpful. And again, please share your first trimester tips, tricks, or things that you went through in your first trimester. I'm sure it would really help a lot of people out in the comment section. And thanks so much for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you would like to, and I will see you guys again very soon. Bye.